All of the BenQ SW series of hardware calibrate display comes pre-calibrated from the factory with different color modes. Now, one of the features that I don't talk about much or we don't use it as much is called Gamma Dual. Gamma Dual is really amazing because it allows you to take one singular input source like this and display two different colors color space on the screen. Now what you can also do is expand that to two different input sources. In this case I have my laptop hook up to the display and also my desktop hook up to the display. So you can view two different sources side by side in different color spaces. I'm Arts to One saying BenQ Brand Ambassador and in this video what I'm going to do is show you how to use the Gamut Dual on the BenQ SW series of hardware calibrated display. For this demo, I'll be using the BenQ SW271, which is their 4K hardware calibrated display. So the number one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a hockey puck, but I have actually pulled a hockey puck here to the side. The SW271 comes with a Gen 1 hockey puck, but this will work with the Gen 2 hockey puck of the SW270C and also the announced SW321C as well. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and call up the menu here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out with one singular source. So in this case, I have my desktop hooked up to the SW271 right here. So I'm going to go in and go under the PIP P by PBP. What PIP stands for is picture in picture, PBP, picture by picture. So you can do two different modes here. So what I'm going to do is start out with a picture by picture to kind of show you what that looks like. So let's go in and do that. So now I have a picture by picture mode. Now this mode right now is currently displaying two input sources. This is my desktop and this happens to be my MacBook Pro here that's actually feeding that signal. But what I'm gonna do first is like I said, let's focus on just one singular source to start out with. And what I'm gonna do here is P by PIP, P by P source, and we're gonna pick that one. Now this MacBook Pro is linked up to display using USB-C. My desktop is linked up to the display using the DisplayPort connection. In this case, I'm going to go choose DisplayPort. This way I have two of the same sources showing side by side. From there, the other menus in this case, the PIP size, horizontal and vertical position, as you can kind of see here, they're grayed out. But what we can do here is we can go in and change the color gamut. This is changing the color mode. So right now I'm viewing both of these in Adobe RGB. But let's say I'm gonna go into full screen mode here and I wanna see side by side how they look in Adobe RGB and then compare to sRGB. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We can see the differences right away where Adobe RGB shows much more saturated colors, especially in the green, and this RGB shows a lot less saturated colors in this case, or we can also see in Rec. 709 how that would look. Now Rec. 709 is very similar to Adobe RGB in terms of color space, in terms of the actual space that it has, it's just wedged a little bit differently in the color spectrum because it's designed more for videos. And lastly, we can also go in and take a look at DCI-P3 color modes too. So you can kind of see here, this is side by side using a single source of input. Now beyond this, what we can also do is we can also go in and change the gamma. So for instance, if I want a gamma of two, I can go ahead and do that. If I want a gamma 1.8, I can do that. Let's go to a gamma 1.6 and we're going to see a big differences here. We can see that this picture looks much more contrast here because this is our standard gamma 2.2 we're using, where this one is using a gamma 1.6. It's actually a lot more dull. That means there's less contrast in that gamma curve. But what we're going to do in this case is let's go ahead and pull up this gamma to 2.6. And you can see the difference right away that this picture become way more contrasty. So the gamma curve will depend on what you need, but this way you can have a quick preview of the gamma curve too. One last thing that you can do with this that is a useful feature is that you can set different white points for the display or different color temperature. In this case, they're both set up to the same 6500K or D65 in this case, but we can bring this down to D50 or 5000 Kelvin and you can see the, the display becoming much warmer. And if we go to the 9300 Kelvin, the display becomes much more cooler because the higher the, higher the color temperature, the cooler the color space is. So in this case, we'll go back to D65 and you get an idea now how we can do this as a side by side. What I'm gonna do now is restore this to Adobe RGB for both of them. So what we're going to go ahead and do is change this to PIP or picture in picture. So let's go ahead and do that. So with the picture in picture mode, what we get here is a smaller picture 
inside a larger frame. Now this is using one singular input source still, but what I can do now is go in and change this right here to different color modes still. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do that, there's a couple things you can do here. Right now I have this picture in picture size to large. What I can also do is medium or small. So depending, depending on how big you want the input, the second source to be, or in this case, the same picture to be, you can go ahead and change the size dynamically on the display. Let's go ahead and keep it at medium for the time being. What I can also do in this case is also change the horizontal position around the display. So let's say if I have it in this corner and is blocking some of the content I'm trying to view or edit, this would be a great way to kind of move it out of the way. You can also, beyond just the horizontal position, you can also do the vertical position too. So let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit here. So you can do a couple of things with this. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that right where it is. And again, we can go in and preview the different gamuts still. We can do Adobe RGB, they're both on there right now. But let's go ahead and take a look at this in sRGB so you can kind of see the colors becoming a lot more less saturated. Rec 709, DCI-P3. DCI-P3 tends to bring back a little bit more of the green compared to, for instance, the Rec 709 or the sRGB in this case. And you can kind of see the difference between the two there. So let's go ahead and bring this back. Again, the gamma, you can go in and change here and you can also change the color temperature very similar to the other mode picture by picture too. Now in this case, what I want to do is go ahead and change the input source so that it no longer just takes the input source from my desktop, but I want to do two input source. So it's going to be my desktop as a reference there and the secondary input source here is going to be from my laptop. So we're going to come into the menu again, PIP, P by P. And in this case, we're going to go into the PIP, P by P source. And what I'm going to do is pick the USB-C because the USB-C is linked to my desk, my laptop right now. And what we can see here is this is a picture from my laptop. This is a picture from my desktop here. They're both running Lightroom and full screen right now, but you get the idea of what we're trying to do here. So what I can do again is go ahead and come in and change different color gamuts modes, for instance, like so. We can see that the orange become less saturated right away. I can come in and go ahead and change the gamma mode again to show less gamma and the picture become a lot more uh, flat in this case, or we can bring the gamma mode up to really high and the picture become more contrasty, right? And lastly, you can also still go in and change the color temperature. So every single standard thing that I've kind of show you here will apply in both one input source or two input source. Now here's the case. I'm curious of, of how you guys are using this two input source on your BenQ display. If you're using this and if you have a creative use for this, please leave them in a comment below because I really like to hear how you guys are using this. All right. So what I'm going to do here is based on these two input source, I'm going to do one more thing here is that I'm going to go ahead and put this two input source here to do a picture by picture in this case, rather than a picture in picture like this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now I can see two input source side by side. Now, one of the reasons I think someone might use their BenQ SW series display in this kind of a mode is for instance, if you're editing a reference color, for instance, if you're working with a brand that you want that color to be consistent throughout, sometime bringing in, for instance, a different input source as the main reference, and then using this mode, to using another computer to pre preview different colors, may be one way to do it. That's part of a thing that I think will work. Um, to be honest with you, I think it's a really cool feature. This is one of the, features I don't touch on too much in my review or you know on my daily workflow but occasionally I do come in this mode and preview the picture side by side from a singular input source to see how my picture would look in different color modes. So this has been a quick demo on how to use your BenQ SWU series of hardware caliber display and a feature called Gamut Dual. I hope that you find this helpful. If you haven't yet, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and also hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool videos like this. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And until next time, art is right. Has a color mode called Gamut Dual. <laughs> Apparently I did that one first. <laughs> <laughs> like blank, like who am I? Oh, oh yes, BenQ, yes, yes. BenQ one more time and then do... Okay. Nice. Cool. Okay. All right, YouTube. YouTube. Jing, you owe me a latte. Not getting any. Every time I upload really great contents and I don't know where I'm going with that. Let me start over. <laughs> Let it flow.
Oh, it's coming out. Don't. The 22nd. Frozen 2. Yeah. We digress. Let it go. Okay, I'm stop singing. Woo! Check it. Yeah, we're done. What are you doing? <laughs> Trying to squeeze me? Oh, let me pull you up. Okay, fine. Wait, go down. And then I'm going to pull you up. Uh huh. And gonna come bring you closer to the screen. Pulling you up and bring you closer to the screen. Walk to the screen. Ooh, it's a little faster. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I have one more. Okay. I'm fine. Stand right here. This is not going on an outtake. Stand right here. I'm gonna push you out. One, go that way. One, two, three. <laughs> you should do a swipe left. Okay, try one more time. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> <Please suck. laughs> Thanks. 